All right, so we got one step equations. With multiplication. And division. That's what we're going to be doing today. All right. Multiplication and division. So let's we'll start with an example. Let's say we had uh, 3x equals 12. Real easy one to start with there. Okay. So anytime 3 and x match up against one another like that, what do they do? They're multiplying. And the inverse operation would be. Divide. The opposite of what they're doing, they're multiplying, so we're going to divide. What are we going to divide by? Three. The number that they multiply by is the same one that you divide by. You don't change the sign. So we're going to divide by three, and this is how I want you to show division, like a fraction. So don't do the little division symbol and then put the three. That's, that's not how you show it. You solve an equation, that's how you're going to show division. What happens to these threes over here? May mark out because three divided by three turns into what? One. one. So that's what that's like saying there's one x left over. And then we just do this division over here. Does three go into twelve evenly? Yeah. How many times? Four times. There's our answer. Notice how my equal signs line up. Should should be happening. So you're working down the page. Uh, if we're doing division, we're not going to do. You're not going to write the division symbol and then the number three out beside anything. You're going to write it like fraction style. That, that's going to help you, especially when we get into much more complicated problems. Okay. Example B. Let's say we had negative 5x equals negative 35. So here we got to get into a few maybe rules of uh, integers. So what's going on on the left side where the variable's at? They're multiplying, right? Negative 5 times x is equal to negative 35. So the opposite of that would be, or the inverse of that, divide by not just 5, negative 5. Remember, we don't change the sign when we're using multiplication and division to solve. And we don't change the sign. You done? You guys done? Okay. Because y'all weren't looking up here. You're doing something else. Quit. All right. Now, what happens to the negative fives on the left? Cancel out. Well, that's leaving us X or whatever variable they have to use. And then here we got to remember our rules about division. When we divide a negative by another negative, what's it turn into? Positive. Positive. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Okay? So that 5 goes into 35 how many times? Seven, seven, seven. seven times. And it's a positive 7 because anytime you divide and the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If you multiply and the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, that's when you get a negative result. Okay? Let's say we had 8v equals negative 48. Yeah, it's kind of nice here. Let me do that one on the paper there. Let's see, see what it's going to be. Careful what you sign, the biggest mistake that, that folks, folks make is error in the sign at the end. Operations used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
What operation are we using? Everybody's getting there. Dividing by eight, right? And eight's canceled. There's V by itself. And negative 48 divided by positive eight is negative six, what we should all be getting. Negative six. Opposite or different signs. When you multiply or divide, the answer is going to be negative. Signs are the same, the answer is positive. Let's do one that kind of confuses folks sometimes, and it's one of the easier ones, but folks always seem to get confused when they have a problem like this. So what operation should we use here? Divisions, okay. So we've got 5 times m is equal to 0. What are we dividing by? 5. 5, five is the number that's with the variable, so we're going to divide everybody by 5. How many times does 5 go into 0? Zero? 0 times. 0 can be divided by anything, and it gets 0. Okay? You can never divide by zero, but you can divide into zero all the time. Okay, so be careful of that. For whatever reason, that tends to confuse folks. Uh, and, and it's not really incredibly hard stuff. All right. So here we have x over 4 is equal to negative 3. So thinking about what operation is going on on the left side. They're dividing. What are they dividing by? 4. So the opposite of dividing by 4 would be multiplying by 4. This is how you're going to show multiplication. Parentheses, the number you're multiplying by right beside it. On the other side, parentheses, the number you're multiplying by, write it. Okay. What happens to these fours? They're going to cancel out, just like they did in the previous problems. There's x. What's negative 3 times positive 4? Negative 12. Signs are different. So the... Answer should be negative. Be careful of that. Negative 12 is right here on the number line, or excuse me, right here on the number line. Positive 12 is 24 units away. So there's a big difference in a positive 12 and a negative 12. So, like, it's completely wrong if it's not the right sign because they're so far apart. All right. Now, uh, let's say we had a uh, Negative x over 7 equals negative 6. This is one that, that folks kind of get squirrely about with the, the negative sign on that fraction. Okay? If a fraction is negative, that means what part of it is negative? The top or the bottom? Does it matter? Because think about fractions like uh, negative three fourths. So the negative out here in front, like that. Negative three divided by four. Is that the same thing as that? Yeah. Is that the same thing? Yeah, it is. Mathematically, it's exactly the same thing. So here, when we got a negative that's just hanging out in the front, well, if we put that with the x, it really doesn't help us any, does it? So we're going to treat this 7 like it's negative, because that's the only number on that side. The other thing is a variable, so we don't want to treat the variable as negative. We want to treat that number as negative. So what are we going to multiply by to solve this problem? 
seven. Negative seven. That's going to cancel out and get us just X. Is it negative 42 or positive 42? I heard both. Why is it positive again? Two negatives. The signs are the same. The answer is going to be positive. Okay. Be careful of that. Easy stuff, though. Let's do one on your own here. Let's say we had uh, n over 11 equals negative 11. And do that one on your own. Times tables up to 12 times 12, and you need to learn them. It'll save you a ton of time. Just having those memorized. And there's free apps for phones that do uh, flashcards to help you learn those. There's plenty of flashcards at the dollar store, something like a dollar for a pack of them to do that with. Okay? You can learn those really easily. And quickly, by just writing them down over and over, you'll have them memorized. You write them and read them. Okay? What do we do to solve this one? Multiply by 11. Positive 11 or negative 11 we're multiplying by? Why positive? Because that's what's over here, right? And make sure you don't make up one. All right, so there's the N by itself. And what's negative 11 times positive 11? Negative how much? 121. Okay. So here we've solved one-step equations involving integers is all we've had so far. Okay, so we're about to drop into having some with fractions in it. Solving with integers. Opposite operation, keep the sign the same for what you're doing your operation with, okay? If they multiply by a positive, you're going to divide by a positive, that sort of thing. Be careful, because yesterday we had to change the sign, do the opposite there. But not today. All right, let's look at some with some fractions involved. So let's start with like two-thirds x equals four over five, something simple like that. So you got to remember uh, some things going on here. What's going on between the two thirds and the x? They're they're multiplying. The opposite of that, or inverse of that, would be dividing. But when we divide by a fraction, what is that the same thing as doing? Multiplying by the Reciprocal. What's a reciprocal of two thirds? Uh, three over two. You flip it over. Okay. Yeah, remember doing that. You may not remember the word reciprocal, but we remember flipping that over. So we're going to flip this and multiply. Flip and multiply. So we're going to multiply by three over two. Like that. These cancel each other out. There's x. Now, what's the rules for multiplying fractions? Uh, what gets multiplied together? Top and bottom, or top and top, bottom to bottom? What? If I'm multiplying those two fractions, I just multiply straight across. Four times three on top, five times two on the bottom. Is that the only way to do it, though? No. Hey, there's cross canceling is another option. And let's do it this way four times three 
is 12. 5 times 2 is 10. Is that the answer? Why not? It can be simplified. That's the key here. How do we simplify that? What goes into both of them? 2. How many times 2 go into 12? 6. How many times 2 go into 10? 5. 6 over 5. Now, could I have gotten that here by using cross-canceling and not had to have done this extra reducing step? Yeah. The way that works is if you're going to reduce by cross-canceling, you can look diagonally. 4 and 2 are both divisible by 2, right? So if I divide 2 by itself, it's a 1. How many times does 2 go into 4? 2 times. And then I do that math. 2 times 3, well, that's that 6 that we got here. 5 times 1, that's that 5 we got here. Okay? Whether you just multiply and then reduce or cross-cancel, I don't care which way you do that, that's fine. They both will re result in the same answer. What could be that as a mixed number? One and one-fifth. Yeah, one-fifth. Good job. I'll tell you this. I Honestly, I prefer that. Six over five. Don't even go to that step. That that That's going to save you a little time later on in like a geometry class when you go into that one. You don't want mixed numbers in geometry. You The improper fraction is what you're going to want to use in there. It's going to help us also later on uh, with, with various other things. Are you going to get sick? Or something? No. Can you wait till we're done with the lesson? All right. All right. Let's, let's look at another fraction problem. Let's say we had negative 7 over 5 n equals 21 over 10. Let's have a little more room there. So, again, what are we doing with uh, the left side? What are they doing? What are they doing? They're multiplying, right? Okay, but it's a fraction. So what are we going to do instead of dividing? By the reciprocal. So is it negative 5 sevenths or positive 5 sevenths? Negative. Remember, we keep the sign the same. That's what's got to happen on both sides is multiplying by the reciprocal. You just flip the fraction and multiply. So these are going to cancel each other out. Seven, seven fifths and then negative five sevenths. They cancel each other out. There's the letter by itself. Now, we can multiply straight across. 21 times 5 and 10 times 7 and get that big fraction, or we can cross-cancel. Okay. If I cross-cancel, will 21 and 7 do any canceling? 7 won't go into 21? Three, three it goes three times, yeah, so I can cross-cancel with that. It goes into itself once and then 21 three times. What about negative 5 and 10? Yeah, 2, and then that's negative 1. And then I just multiply straight across. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. 2 times 1, 2. If I had not cross-canceled, if I just multiplied straight across, what's 21 times negative 5? Be 105, right? Yeah, negative 105. 10 times that. That's, I've got to reduce that fraction. And so I would have to start out with dividing, you know, those by numbers that I know go into them. I don't know a whole lot about 105 other than it ends in a 5, so I can divide it by 5. That means I can, and 70 ends in a 0, so I can divide it by 5. And I could keep doing that until I reduce it. Cross-canceling is going to speed it up a lot as far as doing that without a calculator. And again, 
Do as much as you can without a calculator, and it's going to make you better. Okay, it's part of getting better every day. Is get you know trying to wean yourself away from using the calculator. Like first thing you think of is oh, let me grab that thing and punch it in there. Don't even try to do it without your calculator. Try to do it without a calculator. It helps you. All right, let's do this one. If I had 19 over 25 equals negative one fifth A. Flipping around on you. I had a little trouble with these last couple of days, but I think we sorted it out. So, does that change how the problem's done? No. No. Just because the letters on the other side doesn't change how things are done. So, what do I do to solve this one? By what? Flip it and multiply. Five. It ends up being negative five over one. Change colors there. Negative five over one. Negative five over one. These cancel. There's a by itself. I don't know if y'all know your nineteen times table size. I didn't have to memorize those. I don't know them very well, so I'm looking for a cross canceling that can happen. Is there one? Uh, does five and twenty-five work? Remember the diagonal. That's what we're looking for. Five going to twenty-five. Five times it does go evenly, so I can cross cancel the five, make it a negative one, and the twenty-five. Make it a five. Now I know my ones times tables. What's negative one times nineteen? Negative nineteen. What's one times five? Well, I know that stuff. I'm good at that. Now, if I had to multiply five times nineteen, I could do it. It'd be ninety-five, but that that's not, you know, not the easiest math. It's a lot easier to multiply by one, isn't it? So cross canceling is helpful. That could be written as a mixed number. How? How many times does five going to nineteen? Three times with four left over. So that would be the mixed number for that. I again prefer the improper fraction, but you may see mixed numbers kind of thrown in some. Uh, on Khan Academy, they may do that. I think they tend to go with improper fractions when you get an answer that does have a fraction in it, okay? So be looking for that. All right. Let's do, let's do this one. Negative 2 25ths equals 2 fifths. See if you can do that one on your own. We'll talk about this in a second. You can do that one on your own there. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Make sure when you're when you're doing this, the the one that's got the letter is the one you're going to move and flip, not the other one. So I'm going to flip two fifths and make five over two, and multiply those. Well, I can get cross canceling on both of them. Five goes into itself once and into twenty five five times. Two becomes negative one and one, and then across is negative one fifth. Negative one fifth is what we should get. All right, I want to go over this real quick with you about how fractions can be written and can't be written. 2x over 5 is the same thing as 2 fifths x. Yes. Yes. If the variable is in the top, it's the same thing as if it were beside it. It is not the same thing if the variable is in the bottom. Okay. And what I see a lot of times, uh, especially with, with ninth graders, is when they come in, they want to write fractions with slanted things. They want to write two fifths like that. And that's not how you want to write a fraction in an algebra class. Because now if you put an X beside it, what does it look like? Does it look like this or does it look like that? Which one did you mean? If I'm reading your paper, I don't know. Unless I'm talking to you, I don't know. So don't write your fractions with slashes. Write them vertical like that and make it clear the X is either beside it or up top. I don't care which way you write that. I tend to write them beside it. You've seen that here. Uh, but X in the bottom is not the same thing. Okay, We will get to that after Christmas. January, February, March, we're going to be working with stuff where X is in the bottom. And it matters. Okay, So be careful that either the X is on the top number or it's beside it. X in the bottom does not mean the same thing. So be very, very careful of that when you're writing your problems out and getting there. That's, that's, that's a... Just to keep us from having trouble later on. All right, let's do some decimals. Well, better yet, let's mix integers and fractions first. Because they can. I mean, they're numbers, right? Yeah. Our whole life is mixed with integers and fractions, so let's use them. Let's, let's do that before we go into the decimals. We'll just do a couple of those. Let's say we had... Uh, 2x equals negative 3 fourths. Yikes. Now, anytime I get a problem that has regular numbers like integers that aren't fractions and fractions in them, I try to change one of them. Can I change negative 3 fourths into an integer? 
Is that possible? That's impossible to do. But can I rewrite 2 as a fraction? I can just make it 2 over 1, right? So I'm going to change that integer to a fraction. And now I'm going to treat this problem like it's a fraction problem. How do I get x by itself? Flip and multiply, right? What's the reciprocal of 2 over 1? 1 over 2. Oh, isn't that easy? And then, can we cross cancel there? 3 and 2 don't work. 1 and 4 doesn't do us any good, right? So we're just going to multiply straight across. 3 times 1, 3. 4 times 2 is 8. We end up with 3 eighths. Not too bad. Pretty even. Let's do one more where we mix it up a little bit. Let's say we had negative 3n equals 6 and 2 knots. Numbers. I don't know why we like them so much in the younger grades. Because they do nothing but cause us problems when we get to the other grades. They cause us more work, right? But we do use them a lot in the younger grades. And it makes sense. We got six or something and two nights of it left over. It makes sense. But we don't know. in algebra class, we need to do what with that mixed number? Change it to an improper fraction so that we got just one thing to deal with over there. How do we change six and two nines into an improper fraction? Nine times six plus two, which is nine times six is fifty-four plus two is fifty-six over nine. Now, what else do I need to change in this problem? Into what? Nope. Three Negative three over one. We're going to use, as Hunter said, we're going to use a one third to do what? Multiply. Good. Negative one third is what we're going to multiply by. And it would be wonderful if that were cross cancel, but it won't. Because three doesn't go into 56. So we just multiply straight across. What's 56 times negative 1? Negative 56. What's 9 times 3? 27. Improper fraction. Because it wouldn't cross cancel, that means it won't reduce here. Okay? It won't cross cancel. It won't reduce after you multiply. Unless you just didn't see the cross canceling that could happen. Okay, so here we've mixed integers with fractions and mixed numbers. Doesn't make it that much more complicated. Actually, just makes it just like the fraction problems. It's nothing different. Okay, let's look at decimals to finish up with today. Three point five x equals negative zero point three five. Pretty easy one to start off with. Now, what do I do to solve that? Divide by 3.5. Yeah, the number that's with x is what we're going to divide by. Now, you may not remember how to do this without a calculator. But the way it's done... is you move your decimal place that many times to get that to be a whole number, and then you look at the long division. This is how you're supposed to do it. I'm not, I'm not saying you've got to do this every problem, um, but this is how it works. So if that's a 3.5, you got to move it to where it's a 35. If it were 0.35, you'd move it twice, and you'd move the decimal in here the same number of times. And then you divide. 35 goes into 0, none. 35 goes into 3, none. 
35 goes into 35 one time. That one is after the decimal. That's 35. We subtract. Got zero left over. So that means it went evenly. So it, the answer is going to be negative 0 0.1. The decimals may be the only place that I'm, I'm a little more lenient on, on you using the calculator a little bit more on those, uh, just because that's a long and tedious process sometimes, depending on what the numbers are. Negative 0.84 equals negative 0.4. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't change the problem because it's in a different order where the A is on the right-hand side. I would say you just divide by the negative 0.4. That's absolutely correct. So we're showing that work just like we did with the integers. And, you know, the fractions, you know, we didn't do that with those. We didn't divide with them. We multiplied all the time. These cancel. There's A. Negative divided by negative. We know our answer should be what? Positive something, right? Positive what? Two point one. Here's how I know that. Move that once, move that once. How many times is four going to eight? Two. two. How many times is four going to four? One. one. 2.1. One. That's how that's working. I'm just doing that, that you know, doing that just like if it were four divided, you know, into 84. But this one's got to be there. So that's what you got to watch out for. All right, so 2.1. Let's say we got a problem where they're, you know, they're already – Doing something different. So z negative 0 0.3 equals uh, x over 0 0.9. Just about done. Hang with me. One more example after this. Multiply by what? 0 0.9, because they're doing what with the 0 0.9? They're dividing by it. So I want to multiply by the 0 0.9. Good. Got rid of those. Got X by itself. That's what I'm looking for. What's 9 times 3? 27. How many, how many numbers are after the decimal place here? One on each of them. So that's 2 total, right? It's 0.27 then. And it's negative because positive times a negative. Three. And all the way to the letter Q today. Let's say we had N divided by 1.2 equals 144. What do we do? By 1.2 on both sides. Easy stuff. So 144 is 12 squared. 12. How much? 172.8. Not the decimal. The one variable or one step equations here with multiplication and division. We've done integers, fractions, and decimals. That's the only kind of numbers we deal with. So we've done examples of all of those and and we're we're good. I think we're okay.
Now, uh, be careful to watch your signs. That's the biggest mistake you're going to encounter is positive and negative signs, okay? If you get a Chromebook, I need you to get a Chromebook, sign in, Khan Academy. you got three things to do on there that are one-step equations with, with uh, multiplication and division. Three things, three little assignments on there. That's your job today. After Landon goes, yeah, I'm going to let Landon... You can go ahead. You can go do your do your hacking or whatever you got to do. <laughs> <laughs>